Recently, we posted a video on Larry Hofer's late model C8 Corvette that he's building with an 8.1 liter big block. This particular build requires lots of ingenuity and experience. And Larry is the guy that knows how to do that. There was a huge amount of interest as to how Larry developed his 8.1 liter direct injection cylinder heads and how he also incorporated variable valve timing onto a GM big block. Well, today we're gonna to get into some of that detail and Larry will explain how he has designed and engineered this one of a kind masterpiece. Okay. We hope you enjoy. So Larry, there was a lot of interest in your video that you showed like last week with the C8 conversion with the 8.1 big block. And there were a lot of questions about the uh, cylinder heads and how you did the direct injection and also the variable cam timing. So can you tell us a little bit about what you got here? Okay, so this is our regular production head. It's got a lot of air spaces through here. So in a normal engine, you've got intake ports, you got cylinder head with water jackets and such like this, mm -hmm. but these guys are all empty. Okay, so when you compare it to where the injectors are, here's another head. We had to put injectors here, 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 and here. So that's that's a high that's a high pressure injector. Yeah, this is a 2,000, 3,000 pound fuel injector. So this is what you see in the new C8 Corvette, the 6.2, well, right, or whatever, or that's 2014 used. and later. Okay. I'll use these injectors. So to keep the computer happy, we had to use an injector they'd already recognized. Okay. We couldn't go out and get a BMW injector or something from a Porsche. So we stayed with the Chevy injector. That limited us to the space we had to put it. So we had to put this where it fit. So we had this cutter made, and this cutter fits the size of the 8.1 injector, and it allowed us to cut these holes in here. Okay. So we started out with a quarter inch long drill, and then we used a big one inch drill, and then we fit the injector with this guy here. This guy goes down. So that down. special drill bit basically cuts the profile of this injector, or Nobody, whatever the step. Chevrolet might have this. But we called everybody, and nobody makes direct injector heads, so they have no reason to even have the information on this tool. Okay. So we had to go back to the CAD program from our CAD guy. He dug this out from what they had got from Chevrolet, and then we had this tool made. So, so this head here is your standard 8.1 um, head that you've designed and you market and sell this. Right, that's so a standard that wants... head. Okay, so this is, a, a, and your, this is your design, which has some different design in the in the ports right well no these are the same all the porting is the same no but i mean from a standard stock head oh it's yeah it's got a better short side radius which is this area right here okay and the air goes around this corner so much better okay i'll show you that in a minute yeah but this head here so you notice that it's all solid here 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 so we had to change the water jackets and the water core which is this guy here this is a core that goes in between that makes the cavity for the water for the cooling of the heads. Okay, so this is the area where we can put the injectors. And this injector goes, you can't go into the water or the head bolt hole, so you can go sure. right up against here. Okay, so that's the cutout. So on the other side, the injector is here, and that's directly injecting into the port right. or into the combustion chamber. Into the combustion chamber. And this spray pattern here is a straight spray pattern it's now pointed downhill it's it's pretty not vertical but probably at a 45 degree angle 17 and a half degrees from this so 17 and a half from 90 is what 60 something 63. the angle of this injector here is spraying into the reflector ball on top of the piston there's a special piston that goes with this too and the fuel from this sprays into the combustion chamber and then from there it's dispersed into the chamber okay so this guy here goes something like that so we had to figure this out. We had to build the tooling to cut this out. We had to make this solid. We had to do all this changing to the cores. All right. Yeah. So the big problem is never having done this before, we didn't have any idea what we were actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> we just plowed along until we got something that worked and, and then- so There's a lot of- Oh, gosh. kind of like trial and error. Huh? Yeah, but you've re you've perfected this cylinder head for your oh. standard 8.1 conversion. This head we've been making for 20 years. Okay, and you said that this thing really increases the volumetric efficiency sure. on the 8.1. Like what? 
when you say increases, what are, what are we talking about on this particular it, If I had an 8.1 that was stock and put this on it, if you had a stock 8.1 truck, it makes 325 horsepower from Chevy. Okay. This head, that intake, uh huh, the camshaft. So this is the intake that you cast and this make. This cam intake that we make. This is the other one. This one here. This was made by Arizona Speed Marina. It's a really interesting part. They only made 50 of them. They worked really, really good, but you can't find them. I got this one just because I was lucky to find it. Okay. So this was for offshore racing. He did a really nice job on it. It really was. It worked. They used to call it a tabletop. So, but this manifold, that cylinder head and the, your camshaft. Right, and the 203 camshaft. What are we looking at for upgrade? 525 horsepower all day long. So, so that's you make 200, 200 more horsepower by bolting these heads on, on and intake and a cam. Yes, and that engine there is actually a boat motor. Mm -hmm. And that's what we make is the 525 boat motors. Well, they make them all up to 650 horsepower. It just depends mostly on the cam choice. I think it does have a massive uh, sump. Look at that oil. Well, that's the marine oil pan. Jeez. Oh, that thing whole. 10 quarts. Wow. So, pretty cool. So that's a 10 quart oil pan. This one's been run, I don't know, we used this for dyno work a long time ago. This is a real early head. So this so, was like a R&D motor, really, or engine? Yeah, it, it ran for some duration of time, then we just parked it and we went on to something else. Yeah, bigger, better. But like so, there's... So 200 horsepower by bolting those heads on. By heads, intake. camshaft, and intake. Wow. Because the truck motor, it's got 500 cubic inches, so it's pretty easy to get one horsepower per cubic inch. But with the truck motor, they have it detuned, you could use the word, mm -hmm. to only make 325 horsepower because it's a low RPM, high torque engine. And if people want um, more information, right, they can, you, you, you're, you've published a few books on yeah. this kind of stuff? This book here, we basically made the book. We made a we made a dollar on every book sell. So we're not getting rich off this book. But the thing is, it has all the information in that people ask all these questions. Yeah. So you even have stuff on the supercharger, the Whipple. You, I've seen your conversions here that you do with the Whipple sure. also, right? You know, we've got just information that we've had over the years, and we wrote a book so we can tell people about it. It saves me time on the phone because I have people call and they have all these questions, and we can lead them in the direction to the book. The book. <laughs> and I mean, it's got just about everything you want to know. Matter of fact, it's even got a section on casting these, not these heads, but just casting heads in oh, that's general. that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, all the pinouts for the connectors, I saw mm -hmm. that, that's cool. Oh, yeah. there's the casting, yeah. We had a guy call up today. Now this is just different manifolds we made. Oh, okay. These are 3D printed, we made these so we could test different ideas. This one went on our Corvette. This one's on an offshore race boat. I think Hank's got one of those. Hank's got one, I've got one, there's one in Sweden. So what's the name of the book again, if uh, anyone's interested in it? So it's... 8.1 Performance Book. 8, one point, yeah, 8.1 Performance Vortec, and that's by Larry Hofer and Don Taylor. Don so, Taylor. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so, so Larry, there was also a lot of um, interest in how you put variable cam timing on a big block 8.1. Yeah, this is something we had to do to be able to talk to the computer. It's not by choice, but it worked out okay. <laughs> Okay, so this cam blank here is a normal 8.1 cam blank. Here it has a lobe for running the normal fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump right here. So this guy has got a bump on it right there. Mechanical fuel pump? Sure. Okay. You know, like every small block Chevy in the whole world. Okay, has so this is like old school. This is this is all old school. Car Big block Chevy. Okay. Right. Okay. So the new motors all use variable cam timing. That's what this is. This is a variable cam timing phaser. If you look, See, it's got all the same locations here as this motor here. For the Let's camshaft see. position sensor. Yep. For the camshaft position sensor. That guy, this guy, all this around okay. here. So it's talking to the, the same language as the right. computer. So this is the 8.1 times 4 camshaft sensor. It has the same inputs as the variable cam timing used in the LT2, LT3. And this would be something like you'd see like on a 2001 or early 2000s right. model? Different okay. variations, but they're all in there. Okay. So we used this part here, the front of this cam is like a, a direct injection camshaft. It, it's longer here, has a hole inside here for oil pressure, and it picks the oil pressure up from this groove here. This groove picks up oil pressure, goes through the middle of here, comes to this guy, and then through these holes moves this 
camshaft section forward and backwards relative to that. So this guy's okay. This guy's always turning the same speed, but this inside section is doing this back and forth. So there's got to be some type of solenoid or actuator that's directing oil pressure down this port at well, a certain time, right? No. Or how's that work? This is pressurized from the block. It's okay. just oil in. On the end of here, there's another piston that goes in here. Oh, okay. And this is the piece that you push on with the camshaft. Oh, uh, that's the little plunger on that. Right. On the, um, you, we can look at that later on the Corvette. You showed yeah, us that this last is, okay. This is where this guy goes. And then it controls the oil going to this basically Is that electrically motor. or hydraulic plunger? It's um, a hydraulic actuator here. Okay. And it's got a, a pulse width modulator on this actuator that makes this plunger go in and out and controls the timing. Okay. And then it monitors the timing with this guy here. With the, so it's with the tone wheel. Yeah, it's right. the tone it's wheel. It's constantly monitoring the timing. Okay. Then on this cam, we had to put the high pressure pump. So this is the lifter for a high pressure pump in an LS action LT, LT2. And we used the space for this camshaft fuel pump lobe for a mechanical pump. And then put a three lobe. See, that? there's a three lobe cam lobe there for this guy. Yeah. Where this guy's got one bump, this guy's got three. So as this camshaft is rotating, this lifter's going up and down here. That's great. And that's operating the pump that's built into the top of the block. And this part from here back is exactly the same as the big block Chevy. No magic. Okay, so no changes here. No, this is all just normal. From here forward, the cam is rifle drilled. So it's hollow inside. And uses the oil pressure from here and then uses, let's see, I'll show you the front. Okay, so we got that guy there. So on a modern setup though, we don't, we're not running a distributor of any sort. No. So why do we have this gear um, back here? That's the way they made the cam blank. So that's actually not used nope. in the engine? Nope. See, it's got a dry sump pump on it. This engine has a dry sump pump. So we had to build a, a dry sump pump assembly that's driven outside the motor with a gunner belt. So if I, but even if I, if I took a part a, a C8 Corvette and took the cam out of the, uh, is it going to have a, a gear on it too? No, or no? they this, do not do that. Okay, this is just for your... The C8 your, Corvette, all the LSs, they drive the oil pump off the front of the crank. So this is the cam blank that you had made specifically for right. this setup. This is our normal cam we have made all the time. We called them up and we told them we need four of these. So they made us four of these that are rifle drilled. See this end here? See how short this is? Yeah. And this is This is normal big block. Yeah. And how long this is is LS stuff. And it works with the variable cam phaser here. So it's got all the little holes for oil control here. These guys here control oil inside this phaser. Wow. How many of these cams did you make? We made four of them. Two of them we have. The other two are sitting in boxes just kind of waiting. We put a stock profile on one and then a second profile we added 10 degrees to it because we didn't want to change the... We don't know what the computer's going to do so we didn't change the cam profile too much so that we didn't cause any issues with yeah. airflow. And it did this three-tiered cam lobe or this triangular lobe, is that exact copy off of yes. what's in the new Corvette on the C8? This is an exact copy of LT2 in the Corvette. Okay. And Lingefelder makes different profiles. There's several companies that make different profiles. They pump more fuel, they pump less fuel. We don't know. Okay. So we copied the LT2 as much as we could just so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel when we go in and play with the computer because the computer is ultimately the big problem with this. Okay. We think we've got most of the questions on the computer figured out but we don't know until we're we're going to put it together probably next week and see if the computer yeah. talks to the motor. And hopefully we can document some of that. <laughs> and I'm off all next week by the way. So maybe oh you are. You. I've got a good job for you. Yeah let's, let's talk computers. Now some of the folks probably saw some of the stuff in the background here too. What What is this? What's unique about this? Corvette. This is a 62 Corvette. It has a factory supercharger on it that Zora Duntoff played with. They made like, we guess five, we're not sure. Wow. But this one's a really good clone. I mean, this thing is, it never came from the factory with a supercharger on it. The parts were around, but the only two cars that ever had it were the auto rama like in 58 and the new york auto show in 60 that we can see i'm gonna walk around the other side so you can see it that's <laughs> about the only place we can actually see these two cars and there was another one that was built for 
a guy in, I think it was Detroit, that we found a magazine article on it, but we've never found that guy to find out where the rest of them is. So, I mean, these parts are really, really rare. So what's unique about this one, because I've seen some of your other um, early fuel injected Corvettes, there's, it, there's only four, four injectors, injectors. Right. for an eight cylinder, where the other one had eight injectors. The, the regular one has four injectors on each side, four down there, four here. Because it's putting into the blower and they want to keep the blower cool, they put the four injectors here. So we had to go up an injector size volume here to put the correct fuel into this blower to be able to make it function as it's supposed to. So it uses a Rochester injection here, the regular mechanical drive, stock pump. It's wow. got a blow off valve back here. It has a. Oh, well, yeah, you can see the little springs on the blow off yeah. valve. Yeah, because when we were doing the real, original put together, we had no idea what the fuel trims were and we kept popping blowers. So we put a. I remember you working on this, getting it all dialed in. 10 years. So now it, it works really good and it just kind of hangs out. It doesn't have much to do. It just kind of sits around and looks cool. It is really looking cool. It definitely turns heads. That's it. I mean, there, I, I mean, there's not too many supercharged Corvettes from this era. Well, that's it for this segment, folks. We hope you enjoyed this informative session with Larry Hofer, and we're going to document the progress as he continues building that CA 8.1 liter big block. Thank you.